All right, so it is day two. I am currently back at the house again. What I'm doing is taking some measurements. I wanna take some measurements for the pantry. I think I said this yesterday, but it all depends on how I edit. I try to keep the videos short and sweet. But the pantry, I paid extra to have a plug put in there because my plan is to still have the microwave put in there. So what I wanna do is measure the wall and measure everything so that way I have an idea of what can go in that space. Um, I also want to measure the entryway and then I want to measure the upstairs loft space because um, I do want to find something so that way the boys can have something upstairs. Like even if I just do a sofa for now and don't do anything else, I want a sofa because my focus is the office, the kitchen, the living and the dining right here because when you come into the house, I would like this area to at least seem like it's done even though it ain't really done. So that's my focus is downstairs first and then probably I would say year two, I would be a little bit more focused on upstairs but right now I want to focus on downstairs. I still have on my pajamas so don't judge. Okay, look at this, look like, ah! Um, don't judge okay it's been a very long morning um but i got my measuring tape and everything i'm gonna go ahead you guys look at this oh my goodness it's so crazy but um i'm gonna go ahead and take the measurements and get everything together so let's start that if you guys are new to my channel and you've never seen me measure before i want to kind of share with you what i'm about to do this is actually the fun part of my job and it just so happens that now I'm doing it for myself but I love taking the measurements and getting things situated so if you're in the process of doing a new build or you're in your home I'm going to share with you my tips I'm not saying they're right I'm not saying they're wrong they're just my tips on how I do my measurements so right now what I'm doing is measuring the full length of the living room keep in mind that I do have the stairs and I have the door and then there's going to be a set of bookcase put in there so I'm taking the full length of the living room I do know that I want to have at least 40 inch of space on either end so then I do 40 plus 40 which is 80 so the full length of the living room I don't remember exactly what it was when I wrote it down in my book and I was drawing the plan out I minus 80 from the entire space so I only have that small window of space to work with when I'm doing furniture now if you're thinking to yourself this is not enough space or whatever it keeps me in line that way I don't get furniture that's going to be too big or I don't get anything too small I work within that space and it gives me enough wiggle room to move around because at the end of the day if I decide to do a console or an accent chair I know that I have that 40 inch of space to work with with everything so I'm moving forward to measuring the length of the living room what I'm doing is measuring from in front of the fireplace all the way to where that line cut off which is pretty much the entryway to get to that wall and even though I'm on that wall I still haven't met the outside patio door and what I did with that is I measured about 25 inches in front of the fireplace that way the furniture was going to be back at least 25 inches away from the fireplace in space so when I go to write that number down I do the full measurement but then I minus the 25 inches I do make a note of the full measurement plus 25 that I'm taking away from the measurement that just kind of keeps me in check just keep in mind that drywall uh the molding plus the shoe molding all that stuff has to go down so it's a you're talking about maybe two two to possibly four inches of, of space that you're going to be missing from that measurement what that does is it really keeps you in check in terms of how much furniture can go in the space that way you don't end up with anything too small or anything too big so now what I'm doing is doing the measurement for the upstairs loft space. I already kind of have an idea of how I want things to be laid out. I'm just trying to make sure the measurements are right so that way I can pre-plan. That way when I get into the house, things can move a lot faster. Unlike downstairs where I really needed accessibility and mobility down there. So I was creating walkways with the 30 to 40 inches of space. With this one here, I'm taking away anywhere from four to six inches of space from the measurement just so that way once, you know, the trim, shoe molding and all that goes down, I know exactly what I'm dealing with um, in terms of planning. 
I do believe I want to put a sectional up here, but I'm not 100% sure. But again, the measurements are just kind of helping me. I already kind of figured out where I wanted like wall art and different decor pieces to go up. So I did make sure to measure the width of all those walls. If I'm not mistaken, I think I have a total of five walls that I've measured the width for them. So I can kind of figure where I want things to be at. And then I can kind of start ordering, you know, later on once I'm in the house. Right now I'm in the master bedroom. The wall that I'm currently measuring, I'm thinking about putting that really beautiful burn heart console that was in the master against that wall. And I'm going to go ahead and um, order the wall art that goes above. I think it's going to look really nice. As you can see, the room is like not big. It's big, but it's not like super huge. And the only thing that I'm a little concerned that may not fit in this room is probably the fireplace. But I'm going to figure something out for that. But I don't think the fireplace is going to fit into that room. And lastly, what I'm going to be doing is taking a full width of the space because I want to measure um, a chest and also a bed. Um, I guess you guys can kind of see how the bedroom is laid out and you can kind of see the space. Um, I think just being in a much smaller bedroom everything has to be reconfigured in the space i still want to have like a small little sitting area i still want to have my console i still want to do a lot of things but i do know that everything isn't going to be doable so i have to make sure that everything fits properly so what i want to share with you guys now are some decor pieces accent pieces pretty much when i left the house doing the measurements i head straight for the computer and i started looking at things so the wall art here which is so lovely you guys it is from haverty and I absolutely love it. The color tones match the palette that I'm going for in the space. These frame pieces here are mirrors and they look really great. It comes in a pair of two. So I'm going to have to place in order for a set of two in order to have three going down the entire wall. I think four would be too much for the space, but I'll see how things work out. I do know I 100% want this piece. This right here is another wall art. When you go up the stairs, there is a large wall. I want to say it's about 60 inches wide when you enter into the loft upstairs. So I thought this was going to be really nice. Again, if you can see, I love that bluish gray lavender color. It just looks really great. And for this, it has a pop of yellow. So I thought it would be really nice. For this periodic table, I thought it would be something that would go really nicely in my son's room. Now, because they're boys and, you know, they'd be roughing it up, I thought about doing something a little bit more in the rustic realm for them. For my oldest one, I'll be using this. For my youngest son, I'll be doing the safari theme again. Moving on to the master bedroom, I had to look at bachelor chest and i saw this one here and thought it was really beautiful um in person is actually a really beautiful grayish color which is a nice hue of brown and gray so the picture looks more gray but it's not 100 percent gray the second bachelor chest you guys it's so dainty and pretty i just love it my only concern is that the drawers may be a little too small i'm not 100 percent sure i have to call and find out the exact measurements of the drawers but thus far i'm really loving the piece moving on to the bar stools you guys which i love i told you that the island is about 72 inches wide and it really depends on the size of the bar stools i may be able to do four but then i may only be able to do three so right now i'm putting in my mind three so I was looking at the standard counter height bar stools and this one here had the trim detail around it, which I love. But if I got it, I'm not 100% sure if I would get it with the trim detail. This second bar stool here, you guys, I absolutely love it. I love it. The round back, the trim detail around it, the legs. It's just so beautiful. I love it. I think it would really give a nice element into the island. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the kitchen is two-toned. So the kitchen cabinets themselves um, are white, but I decided to go with a much darker finish on the island, you guys. It's going to look so nice. This bar stool here is the very last decor piece that I'm going to be sharing. I do love it. I think it's really great. Again, I love how it kind of bears around the seat itself is rounded the only thing that I'm not really in love with is the fact that the base is chrome but I think I'm not a hundred percent sure I think the company um, gives you an option to change the base out 
I don't know 100% right this second while I'm doing this, but I will know at least by the end of the month if they're capable of doing that. But then that's what would make that seat for me a contender. But you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will see you guys next time. Bye.